Harvey, you're playing Harbeck. What I, do you remember happening last time you played? Uh, we just beat a bunch of monsters, and I got nailed pretty badly, so I'm wandering around wondering what the hell's going on while you <laughs> need to go look at some uh, dead orcs and ogre, I believe. That sounds about right. Oh, yeah, and there's a room on the back of the cave we haven't been through. Right. Yes, you have looting opportunities. Um, what? So you are you are now in the inside the cave. You just finished the um battle. You right. smell the disgusting guts that spilled out of the ogre's belly. And I thought um, that was Richie. what was that? I thought that was uh, Richie. <laughs> no, <laughs> Rokus. Rokus doesn't yeah. smell that bad. He's Oh. I'm a, I'm an elf. I go through the woods unnoticed, unlike. I could have sworn that was, I could have sworn that was an elf fart. Okay. <laughs> unlike you, uh, unwashed dwarves that the crit critters faint when you come through the woods. Uh oh, got some racial tensions going on. <laughs> Says in my thing, I don't like elves. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. Okay, cool. So anyway, you guys are in the same cave that you were at last time, and um, you haven't left yet. It stinks real bad, and you got a lot of dead bodies laying around. So you let me know what you want to do. Search the bodies first. Okay. Um. So you guys go through the searching, um, and they just have. Uh, basic armor and uh, their weapons. They don't have anything on them of value. Now you said there was a room across from us? Yeah, there's a small room at the top of the map. Okay, and, and were there boxes stacked in there or something? Yeah. Let's go and carefully go through that then. You find a treasure chest and a couple of other boxes. As you search through the boxes, not, none of them are locked. You come up with 750 copper pieces, 180 silver pieces, 62 electrum, 30 gold pieces, and you find three vials of perfume. You think they might have some value. Harvick, you take it because we've already got gold and silver in our, po in our purses. Yeah. And even though you're a stinky dwarf, you're a paladin, so you're a good guy. Okay, so you don't want any of the perfume, I, that figures. No, we want you to have it. <laughs> you guys loot the bodies, don't find anything, and then you find some valuables hidden in this little room. And we've right. ser searched carefully looking for secret passages and, and you nooks have and not, crannies and trapdoors. You have door. not done that. If you want okay. to do that, you should roll for investigation. Okay, I rolled a 15. Anybody else want to look carefully and see if they find anything? Okay, um, I think I have a plus one on investigation. Got a 12, and I have a plus one on my investigation. That would be 13, 13 I guess. Okay, 13. Um, so 15 and 13, did I see you want to look? I've got an 18 and with nothing. Oh, 18. So she did. The, she got total. the best. Um, she's the most thorough, and she's looking carefully. Um, you guys find that this cave is doesn't have any man-made um openings really. It's all it seems to be all natural, and um, you don't find anything suspicious at all. Okay. You, you okay. feel that this cave is a naturally occurring cave without any trap doors or anything. No modifications. Yeah. Um, okay, so we need to take off... Um, weren't we both supposed to bring back... Um, the head of the, of the uh, chief of the head orcs, I believe, is what I... Yes, the head okay. of the leader. Yeah, so nope. you the the leader is dressed a little differently from the others. He's got like some a lot more decorations on, like teeth and whatever. 
Um, None of the decorations are worth anything? Mm, well, not, nah, probably not. There's like a necklace made of human teeth. And um, he's got like broken arrows, like lots of arrows um, made into decorations, like arrowheads. Uh huh. And um, you see. Nothing, well, I, nothing I'd want to sell. I could sell somewhere later on or anything. Not, you, like maybe you could get like a copper piece for a bunch of arrowheads or something. But, okay. like, it doesn't look like it's bothered. You probably wouldn't bother picking it up. Um, well, okay. But you do notice, like, they're, you, they have a similar, like, motif of arrows, which the orcs that you fought in the open field, they also had that. Okay. So you, that... you might assume they're from the same group. Okay. Now, was that drawn, or was it an actual... The other one was, like, painted on. That's what I thought. This guy's got, like, actual arrows. He's got some painted ones, too. But he's got okay. some actual arrows as, like, necklaces and things. Let's, okay, take, now. let's take his necklace. I want to take all the tusks from the dead orcs and the ogre. Okay. I believe there were six orcs. Yep. Six orcs and one ogre. Six pairs of orc tusks. Now, maybe we should take out the orc tusks, take the um, leader's head back with the tusks intact to show it to the other dude and then take them out. Okay. Yeah. Sounds... Who wants the honor of cutting off his head? Do you I want think to do it, the his head already, was it already cut off? <laughs> I can't remember. It might it might have fallen off during our our scuffle. Well, either way, the head is off now, and uh, <laughs> you guys have it. Okay. Who's gonna take the head? Harvey Harbick. Harvick. His smelly dwarf can carry the smelly head. Okay. What do you think yeah. about that, Harvick? Yeah, that's sure. I don't mind heads. Um, the I have two questions. One is if I one of the battle axes that they have Did that help me in terms of being able to chop down uh, uh, a tree or get a branch for a Richie can make a trap or something like that would that be useful um the 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 axes are like um, two-handed weapons so they actually yeah. do have a pretty good like attack stat I think their damage is a little higher than your sword but um because you wouldn't be able to use your shield and stuff, so it's probably not the best weapon. If you want to use it for utility, yeah, you could use it to um, chop down doors or trees or things like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, in case I might want to do that sometime, I'll take an axe. Yeah, that's fine. And then also, um, I have the um, what is it? Divine sense. Yeah. Right. If I if I cast that, uh, will those um, perfume bottles tell me if they are uh, enchanted in any way? Um, I think that spell only applies for like alignment, so like good and evil, and then it had like yeah. testing out um, certain. Yes, I can sense anything affected by the hollow spell, yeah, but I have no idea how. That up. Okay, well, I'll tell you for now. It's not. It, it doesn't have the hollow spell on it. We should. We should try to remember to actually look that up after the session this time, or okay. in between. But okay. yeah, the it's not affected with that spell. Basically, there there's other um spells that are meant for uh, detecting magic. There's a spell called okay. Detect that, Magic. Didn't one of our characters have that? I believe ICU has that. Yeah, Detect Magic. I have that. Now, does that have a R next to it? I don't think it does. Let me look it up on the... Okay. If it does, that means you can cast it as a ritual, which doesn't take a spell slot, but takes time. I need to repair myself anyway, so maybe we should... She, while she does that, uh, I can uh, try to uh, heal. You could do a... Uh, yeah, you haven't... I don't think you've done a short rest yet, 
so I'd have, I'll have to explain that. So you can wait till nightfall to do a long rest, which gives you all your hit points back and your spell slots. So that's the most powerful way to do that. But a short rest lets you um, spend only an hour resting and you don't actually have to sleep. So you can keep watch during it and you get to roll your hit dice. At what time is it right now? We're afternoon. So it's still, okay. it's still a while if before dark. If we can't get back to the tower, I vote we wait and sleep here because this is a, you know, no one's going to be hard to attack us if we have someone sitting at the uh, entrance. Uh, you can get back to the old Alwell where the necromancer was by nightfall. Okay. Well, why don't I just roll for that and then we'll take off. Topped off. Yeah, you only needed six. Okay. So you're at, you're at max now, and you still have Let's two. You have two more. Um, those refresh when you do the long rest. Okay. Okay. So you got two to go. Let's head out, so we can get to the tower before dark. Okay. So you spend an hour. Um, you. Let's see if you can get there in good time with um, Rokus's leading you. So, Rokus, do a survival check. Survival is plus five, so my total is eight. Um, well, Rokus isn't doing that good of a job. So, um, it gets dark, and you're still not back yet. My, <laughs> anybody have any comments? Yeah, you said we were going to get back in time. <laughs> well, well, piece of shit. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. But we had to look after you, and you needed your rest. Yeah, you had to take your nappy, or we would have been there. So All those we'll chuckling to... in the back. So, do you want to continue in the dark? I can't see very well in the dark. Or do you want to stop somewhere and take a long rest? And Rokas can be semi out of it and will keep guard over us. Yeah, make him spend the whole night up since he's the one that couldn't uh, get us here in time. I don't need to sleep like you wimpy ass dwarfs anyway. <laughs> All right, so are you going to do your long rest here? I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Rokas, Unless... Rokas thinks you only need to walk for another hour. What do you think, Ice? You should we trust them? Uh, sure. Let's let's go. I have no, I have night vision, so I can help. You can oh, run yeah. away. Just follow me. I'll <laughs> hang on to your belt. Yeah, Vola's like following you is what got us into this in the first place. That's right. <laughs> is that Vola running our mouth? Yeah. Well, you have night vision too, don't you? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so you can help too. All right. How about how about how about a Harbeck? Yeah, he dwarfs can see yeah, in the dark. I, yeah, we can put we can put uh, icy in the middle, like a one on each side and one in the front or something. I think that's your yeah. general um, marching order anyway, right? Yeah. So let's go. All right. So, so roll another um, roll another survival check. Ah, this time I got 22. Okay, so now that you guys uh, harassed him, he's like paying it very close attention and he gets yeah, you there uh, in you a box. Kick his butt. You have to constantly <laughs> kick his butt to get him to do his job. That figures <laughs> took a while. <laughs> so you actually get back in about 40 minutes because he did such a good job. And uh, you see the same situation as before this not there there are zombies in the broken tower and there's one group of four outside of his tent let's give a yell out to him we're back okay he comes outside says, oh you've Hello. returned yep and we brought the you up uh, we brought you the head you wanted mm, let me see and I didn't take his t teeth out yet, but I want I want the tusks from this guy. Hmm. You can have them. 
Yes, yes, this is the this seems to be the uh, the right one. Um And you promised a, you promised us a pearl. Yes, that's right. He goes back in comes back out and he tosses you a pearl. He tosses it to Rokus. Thanks. We so, would um, like to rest here and could your uh, zombies protect us? Yes, they will keep watch. Okay. Another thing, um, there was talk of a spell book. A spell book? Yes. We were interested in a spell book. Um, had had um, belonged to... Um... Bow Gentle. Yeah. Hmm, Bow Gentle. It's Bow Gentle spell book, yeah. We we're curious if you knew anything about it. I have heard of Bow Gentle. I don't know where his spell book would be. What can you tell us about Bow Gentle? And I'm going to take the pearl, okay, you guys? Sure. I have it. Here it is. The necromancer Harmon Cost, he tells you that Bow Gentle lived about 900 years ago. He admires him because he had a, um, a quest for knowledge and finding magic. He, he was always uh, venturing into dangerous places in search of hoarded magic. He said he had a grand career in wizardry up and down the Sword Coast. So he's quite famous. Also, um, I would like to ask the Necromancer, all the orcs that we've seen recently, although since I've been around, <laughs> uh, have had that uh, this arrow emblem on them. Does he know anything about that? Um, he says, uh, I believe they're from the tribe of the the many arrows. They come. I think they're they're based up north. Okay, tribe of many arrows. That's right. Now, before you said, if we went back to see um, Agatha, yeah, you didn't think we'd be able to recontact her. Generally, the magic that binds the banshees to the world, it's it's uh, a fickle thing. But if we often, went back on Often when someone contacts a banshee, then after their business is concluded, they're not able to meet with them again. <clears throat> um, if you we could went try, back... But, uh, we could try, but wouldn't, I wouldn't think it was going to work. Okay. I'm whispering to Richard, Rokas rather, I'm whispering to Rokas, what were we uh, said what, we were what, out to do? What was We the were out to find out what's going on in the tower. Yeah. And um, we asked before and he told us. Let's ask him again to refresh our memory since we've been off fighting orcs. Uh, so you want to clarify about what, he's do what he said he was doing? Yeah, so now we okay, brought just you do the... a do a, do a history check unless you want to actually you you want, if you want to just try to remember you can do a history check. If you want to ask him again then you can do that. Oh, okay, um um is his name Harmon Cost? Yeah. Okay, Harmon Cost. Oh, Hammond, I think. Let me look. Hammond ha Cost. We we've brought you the Orcad. That's yes. Thank you. And I have and, paid you. <laughs> yeah, and you've paid us, but we'd like to know. We'd like to know, you know, what it is you have in mind doing here. What, what, what are you doing? I'm investigating this tower. Okay, and we told you everything we we know about the tower. Yeah. Um. What have you discovered so far? Hmm. Well, I've only been here a short time. Um, I, I have confirmed the origins of the tower, and I, I want to continue investigating. Can you show us around? I'd rather not. How long do you plan to stay here? Uh, it's hard to say. We might be able to help you um, investigate the tower, you know. We've got a dwarf with us who's who's knowledgeable in these things yes we i have paid him for his knowledge 
people we could we could uh, help you search and look maybe we can find a um, an entrance or something that you might have overlooked if you find one I'll reward you okay let's go check the place out okay we, we hadn't gone, done a good investigation of the tower okay so anybody who wants to investigate do an investigation check okay I rolled a 14 I rolled a 12 plus 1 so that's 13 and okay. I just have a total of 7 okay you don't find anything particularly interesting about the surrounding area you don't find any secret doors or any like ways down into the tower or anything like that the investigation you do is like of all the physical surroundings here uh, if you want to do you want to check for anything else that you could tell me specifically basically um, the tower the physical building of the tower there's nothing interesting well if we dig around in the floor looking for any kind of um openings not for that kind of thing you, you don't find anything how about i see why don't you do a detect magic see if there's anything uh going on there we can also get out the pearl and the um the jade frog and the piece of marble just to be I... checking them when you do the detect magic see if there's any magic with any of our items it's a good idea to use it all at once okay i'll uh i'm going to cast a detect magic sk uh, spell okay just to be clear, we still haven't done the long rest, so it's like dark. So yep. I see you. Her uh, seven on investigation makes sense that <laughs> she wouldn't be able to find anything. So detect magic. Okay, it is a ritual spell. It has the R there. So the the R is ritual. That means that um, if you spend ten minutes to cast it that you don't need to use a spell slot. So Just as long as you have time, you can do it um, without spe using a yeah. spell. Yeah, we've got time, so I'll take Okay, it. so cool. So you use you use it, you spend 10 minutes starting the spell and don't. Um, the spell lasts for 10 minutes. The items that you have, so you look through all your loot, you have a jade frog, a jeweled eye patch, a, um, Pearl. Reagents. You have some. The perfume. You have perfume. You have malachite gems. You have carnelians, peridots, and a pearl. And I have two pearls. Okay. And none of your those loot items. None of them have any magic coming off of them, except for the reagent. But you can you can see that it's because it's a alchemical ingredient um, my sword my sword is lit up yeah if she looks at your both of you have magic swords so she can see that coming off um when she looks around the area um she can see like a misty aura of magic in this area and it's quite strong within the tower but it doesn't, it's more, it's kind of like a fog that gets thicker as you get towards the middle of the tower. But it doesn't lead you directly to any one point. It's just, uh, it's like a fog filling up the whole tower. And you can kind of get a feeling, the, the shape of the tower, it kind of continues up as if the tower is still there. So you can kind of get an outline of the shape of the, the of original what the tower. tower used to look like. Yeah. So icy. Let's take our long rest, and in the morning, when we're when we're rested up, and you can see better, maybe we can investigate in the light. You might have better luck. Oh, we're gonna do a long rest. I'm not sure I trust those zombies. We're gonna need to do something to make sure they don't. I don't know what they do around nighttime, but I'm. You slept here last time. Yeah, we're good. He pro we we did a transaction. Okay. 
Uh, I I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea to keep an eye on the zombies. So Vola agrees with Harvick that we get keep okay, our eyes out. Rory, but um, Rory. you did just reminding you that you guys have slept in this place once. And 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 I don't actually um, sleep. I just meditate. So I'll keep an eye out. I'll keep an eye. Well, last last time we slept here, he wanted us to do something. It's time to get his pearl back. I would uh, be real. Okay. Yeah, okay. We'll I'll take shifts. Sense. We'll take shifts with Roar. I Roar? I yeah. <laughs> Roar, Roar, yes, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and Goop. And everybody else. Um. <laughs> well, goof is not. There's no goop. Okay. Anyway, do so have... yeah, let, do you want to do the? We were doing watches carefully already. So you want to do the the Rokus watches all night and the other three take turns thing? Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Okay. I so, rolled a sixteen. Yeah, perception checks we need from everybody. So okay. what's your total there? Plus five. Twenty-one for me. Okay, I got a seven. Perception. Yeah, it's a minus one, so I have a six. Yeah. Okay. Now he's when he's on watch, I'm still up. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Okay. You're watching Just, all night. Yeah. But they're helping you. Well, I know what kind of help be... I know what kind of help I get from a dwarf, so I'm yeah, keeping Har him Harvick's not doing a great job. You saw him. You, he was milling about and on watch, and you saw him staring at a rock for about ten minutes. I'm picking, his, I'm picking <laughs> his nose. Picking his nose. Yeah, he's braiding his mustache again. <laughs> um. So uh, next will be um, Vola. She got a two. Oh man. Plus um plus zero. So she's just not even trying. <laughs> and uh I see you. Nineteen plus three, twenty-two. Okay, she's doing a good job. Um but That's because I'm rested. It's you get really through the whole now. night and the zombies don't do anything out of the ordinary and you don't see any enemies approach. Okay. Okay, now that it's light again. Yeah. I see. Why don't you go out to the middle, the very middle of the tower, and check things out again? Now that you can see, because there was a lot of magic in that center spot. Seemed to be where it was emanating from. Okay, but I gotta find that spell. Do you want me to? So I have to do the spell again. Yeah, you can you do the ritual again if you want to take ten minutes. Okay, we'll do the ritual. Um. Yeah, she goes a hum, and then after <laughs> ten minutes of a humming, she tells you that she sees pretty much the same thing as last night. The because the magic is like um, outside the realms of science, like it doesn't get affected by light. Really, it's something that she can see in her mind. So she doesn't really get much. Um, benefit from doing it again in the day like but then in the night it was just glowing th through the darkness to her mind you know like she can just see it there um, okay uh it's like a you know ghostly mist that she can see um, well, why, don't, why don't you take a look around and just do another f check now that you can see in the light for for regular stuff okay she sees, she sees a lot of magic emanating from the necromancer's tent. Ah. And uh, uh, yeah, other than that, that's about that. all. What's that? Say, so, yeah, you need magic to control zombies, so that's hardly surprising. Yeah. What do you say we take back the, our, the information we've got to Gariella um, that we got from the Banshee, Agatha? And we can let uh, them also know uh, who's at this tower. Where okay. we head back to the town. Okay, and on our way back to the town, we're, if we go by the path we took, we'll go by the Banshee, we can at least try 
to see if we can um, um, trade her a, a pearl or a frog or something for um, more information about the spell book. Okay, but we better know what we want to ask her because I think she'll only answer one question at a time. Yeah. Yeah, we were looking for... To, to see if she knew anything, knew the whereabouts of the spell book. Well, she told us it was traded to this person. So we'd need to ask her the question, like a specific question. If yeah, she what knows did, what did you want to ask her again? If she knows where if, where we could... Where the, where the spell book is. No, she told us she, it was She traded. told you the answer for that already. Okay, yeah, so I don't know if we have what other question we I'll might ask I'll just save her. you some time. She's not going to come back. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, let's head so back to... So let's um, just say you guys went there, you've messed around and nothing happened. Okay, and we're on our way back then. Yeah, and she already oh, and she told you the answer to that question. So, you so we're going to head back right. to Fendelin. And when we, when we... That's when a we get trip, isn't it? Uh, yeah. When so. we get to the place where the first fight we had with the bugbear and goblin. That was a different time. No, uh, Are we talking about the orcs? The orcs, yeah. yeah, that we met on the path. Yeah. So you had a fight with orcs and you had a fight before Har Harbeck joined with bugbears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we fought four orcs on the way up. Yeah. Well, when we get had to that. They had that same, the orcs we fought the first time had the same uh, arrow patch that the ones we fought the second time, so they're in yeah. the same tribe. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we stop there, I'm going to knock their teeth out, too. Okay, <laughs> so okay. are we going to have something to eat and then head out? Sure. So we have to go to equipment? Yeah, if, if you, you guys want to minus your rations there, you can do that. So okay, so right now Fendelin. you're right now you're at Coneyberry, the ruins. Okay, so you've gone okay. from the ne necromancer's place at Old Alwell back to Coneyberry. You stopped in at the Banshee's place, which didn't take long, and now mm -hmm. it's still um, early. It's still morning. Okay, Coneyberry is just ruins, right? Yep. And we're going to head back down the Tybor Trail. And our destination is... Fandolin. Fandolin. So you know that it took you a little over two days last time. Okay. Oh. After, after you set out, it, after uh, I think only a few hours, you get to where the dead orcs are laying around in a field. Okay. You see some crows and coyotes have been chewing on him okay but no signs of any other creatures i collect the tusks all right so now i now that have ten, ten, four, ten pairs yeah then we have to continue we want to continue on then yeah yes i'm okay. guessing now can my dwarf friend um fashion things out of stone he doesn't have any stone working skills. He's a dwarf. He's also like a noble. A smart dwarf. Don't do uh, like her. I didn't know there was such a thing. Well, you two get along. <laughs> we have many more miles to go. I can't help it if he's an elf. He looked at me. <laughs> let's get, let's carry on. Have you got your I see you there, Lucas? I see you missing <laughs> Linnea, I think. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, as you go down the road, uh, Rokus and um, Harbeck bicker at each other. And I see you rolls her eyes until her eyes get tired of rolling. Uh, Vola's and mostly laughing. smart enough to just keep quiet. Vola's mostly laughing at them as they bicker. As it gets dark, you find yourself in a area where there's a small patch of woods but other than that it's mostly open there's a few boulders like kind of rocky formations around but they're not up on hills or anything well i'm <clears throat> i'm really uh, at home in the woods so if you guys want to 
get into that small patch of woods, I can uh, have heightened uh, observation skills and I'll also set up my hunter's trap and some trip wires to uh, alert us to any danger trip. in the night. I think it's the trip rope, isn't it? You don't have yeah. wires. You have thread? Well, you had thread, yeah. I believe? Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure that like, you're not... Um... <laughs> I'm yeah. going to use the thread. I'm going to set my hunter's trap. Okay. Cool. So... I, I... I've got yeah. that axe so I can uh, uh, whittle down anything you need, like stakes or anything like that. Sure. Okay. Anything particular you guys want to make? <clears throat> well, I'm going to take the, the... I could take a piece of the rope and cut it off and unwind it and make, and make a cord out of it. I'm going to get my bedroll out and get comfortable. <laughs> okay. Good night, Rokas. Good night, Harvard. Good night, Viola. Nighty night. Okay, so I guess I see you'll take the last watch this time. Yeah, I'm yeah. snoring. I'm snoring. <laughs> All right, so um, let's do the watch. So, Rokas, you roll your perception. Uh, okay. 20 total. Harvick next. R. Four. F and then minus one. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Harvick sucks at it again. Vola's turn. Just nose. Vola got a thirteen. So during um the those first watches, you you don't see anything of interest. After the first four hours, he's like not even meditating, so he's watching carefully. Doesn't see anything interesting just the uh, animals and things okay and then i see you do yours two plus three is five all right i'm hungry and i need my coffee so she doesn't see anything rokus what was your total before 20. from a distance you see something um rokus it's like a beast milling about in the field i will okay. show you what it looks like it's Teddy. It's a teddy bear. It's an owl bear. So maybe let's have Rokas do a history check, or a, I don't know. Maybe it should be a nature check. Nature check. <laughs> do a nature check to see if you know anything about owl owl bears. Nature's plus two, so that's uh, eleven. Eleven. All right, that's average. So. I nudge her and point to this thing, too. Okay, so Rokas knows the description, which is in the book. It says, A monstrous cross between a giant owl and a bear. An owl bear's reputation for ferocity and aggression makes it one of the most feared predators of the wild. How Moving far away is it? It's about <clears throat> 200 feet. Okay. Well, I'm going to get out my longbow, and if it gets within range i'll be i'm going to uh, set up an action all right so you want to avoid it seeing you yes okay so roll a stealth check 17 plus 5 22 and i see you how about yours because you're awake 12 plus 2 is 14. you notice the bear starts sniffing <laughs> Smells Harvey. Did you pick on my baby? <laughs> <laughs> Smell good to me. <laughs> you? Yeah, but he is your sunshine. That's oh, true. <laughs> what choice do I have? <laughs> and aren't aren't you a harpy? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You better watch it. I will fly through those lines. <laughs> you have to have social distancing so you can't beat him up. <laughs> Alright, so um, the owlbear is sniffing around and then he looks directly at ICU. So you see a owlbear looking at you and he's walking 
starts walking in your direction. I'm um, I'm doing the um, ready action. Okay, he's coming towards me. How far is he from us again? He was two hundred feet. So should we wake everybody else up and tell them to get ready? Yeah, you wake them up, and I'll uh, I'll draw my bow and the. When he hits that 150-foot mark, I'm going to release an arrow. Okay, I'm going to go wake up Arvid and uh, Viola. Vola. 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 She's got a name for everybody. (laughs) (laughs) It's continuing to come your way, so I think we're going to have to start a combat here. Good job. Uh, Not some. I didn't. I didn't expect for this to happen. Is what I'm it was saying. really smart of you, uh, you, for the elf there to suggest we uh, go into the forest where owl bears live. <laughs> he's not. He's not that was, uh, that in was the real woods. Right. That was well, that was really good, elf. He's, he's not in the, in the woods. He's, he's out in the, in the field. field, dummy. <laughs> oh, it says, uh, no, it says they live in the forest. I'm looking up monsters right now. That's fine, but there's but forest. Owl bears live in the forest. But okay. he's not Actually, in the forest. Uh, uh, Harvey is. It's you. It's not that you can't look up monsters, but it's kind of better if you don't, because your character probably oh. doesn't know all their abilities and things. Yeah, your character. Sorry, your, your character's a dumb shit. <laughs> Used uh, to quick you, fighting with each other. We have to get prepared for battle. You're gonna do your normal, um, Vola and Harvick in the front. Yes. I am. Um, I got five. Me too. Five total? Yeah. I'm here. Not very good. Um, <laughs> so you guys... And I got a eight total. You guys decide who wants to go first. Well, did Vola go? Hold on. Yeah, I'm not ready. Hold on. I want to deal with Harvick and Rokas first. So... Let me... I'll, I'll go ahead and go last. Uh, Vola has a twelve. Okay, so once you see the bear, the owl bear looks straight at ICU, starts walking, and then starts uh, running. And um, Rokus is prepared to shoot. When it reaches 150 feet, he loses an arrow. Roll to hit. 11 plus 7, 18. That hits. I got a 5 plus 3, 8. Hail of Thorns. He takes a D10. If he fails, he only gets half. So he's got to roll a um, a save of Dexterity of 13. Okay, Dexterity saving throw. Higher than 13. Whoa, he got a 1, so he fails automatically. Uh, 9. 9 damage? 9 more, yeah. Alright, now we start the combat order. It is Vola's turn first. Vola looks at you guys and says, Okay, I'll stay here and um, I'll take a defensive action to uh, protect you guys. Okay. Good good work. Thank okay. you. So she does that. And now it's the owl bear, owlbear's turn. It runs and now it is 120 feet away from you guys. Um, it was like slowly picking up speed. Okay, now it's ICU's turn. Produce flame. It's it says it arrange itself. Is so is that any distance? That one is a little confusing because yeah, you you create the ball in your hand. That's why it's self. But I think in the description it says that you can throw it thirty feet or something like that. Okay, so I can't do anything. It says yeah. It says when you cast a spell or as an action later turn, you can hurl the flame at a creature within thirty feet of you. Okay, I. I, I, I guess I'll, I just, I'll, I'll get ready with, um, with that. I'll, I'll get ready. Okay. Hey, Harbeck, how far can you throw your javelin? Uh, 130, I believe it is. So ICU does that, now it's Harvick's turn. So are you going to prepare a, bon- uh, like, defensive action or something like that? Yes. Okay. Not gonna throw your javelin. Oh yeah, what about your javelin? <clears throat> um, okay, if I throw my javelin, am, am I gonna be able to retrieve it after the, um, or could I lose it? It's either gonna be sticking in the ground or in the critter. We should be uh, able to get it back. Yeah. 
Um, the 30, 120 is, the 30 is like uh, your normal, that's what you're good at throwing in that range, and then 120 is with disadvantage. Okay, okay so, so I... just letting you know, Harvick, you have the option to throw it, but you're not good at throwing that far, so it would be difficult. Okay. But if I, but if we, at the end, I'll be able to get all my javelins back for the ones I throw, correct? Yeah. How many do you have? Five. Five? Okay. Might as well try it. One. Yeah, I might guess so. Okay. Uh, I rolled a one. <laughs> you missed. You missed him by a mile. I... I was I was right before you said that I was gonna say if you roll a one maybe it will have it break but since I didn't say that it didn't, it didn't happen. Okay, so yeah, you totally missed him. Um, next is Rokus's turn. This time I threw a fourteen plus seven to hit. The hits. Longbow is yeah plus seven to hit and one d eight. Three plus three, six damage. Okay, and then your... The Hail of Thorns, thorns. is it? What was it? Dex, you said? Thirteen. Thirteen Dex? Dexterity? Yeah, yeah you yeah. only got a six, so he failed. Okay, and he gets an extra seven. Got some arrows sticking out of him with thorns shooting out. He doesn't look happy about it. So it's Vola's turn. Come on, Vola. She takes the defensive action. It's the Albear's turn. It's looking pissed. It takes the dash action, which lets you run twice your movement speed. So it goes, now it's at 40 feet. It starts running real fast. It's only 40 feet away now, and you, you get Try to imagine a polar bear with an owl's head, and uh, it's running right at you. It's pretty intimidating. It is ICU's turn. It's the the owlbear is forty feet away. I could throw my javelin, but you know what? I'll just stay defensive. And Harvick, uh, after I threw the javelin, it, it takes time to pick up the sword, so I'll spend my time doing that. Yeah, I was gonna suggest that. Okay, so you get your stuff out and get ready. So let's move to Rokus' turn. Okay, I'm gonna shoot him again with my bow. Okay. And this time it's 16. That hits. All right. Five plus three, eight for eight the damage. arrow. And his dexterity of 13. Okay, he passes. So what happens? So, so he gets half. Okay. And he, so he. He he only gets one more damage. Damage, yeah. Okay, cool. It's Vola's turn. Vola looks to you guys and um, she says, "Brace yourself, guys." She's still on defensive action. It is the Albuer's turn. It runs the remaining forty feet up to Harvick and it's going to do its multi attack. It has a beak and claw attack. So first it swipes at Harbeck with his claws. What was your armor class? Armor is 18. All right, so that was uh, eight plus seven, so that's not enough. Second attack with its beak tries to bite you. Six plus seven, that's not enough. So it misses its two attacks. It is now ICU's turn. I'm gonna throw my Ball of fire at him. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. 14 plus 5 is 19. That hits. The damage is 5. Okay. It is Harbeck's turn. Okay, so let's see. I roll a 4 plus 7 for the weapon, so that's 11. That misses. I'm also, I'm also doing a wrathful smite. Okay, your sword is enchanted with the power, but you miss the attack. I can't hit him with it. He has to actually touch him with it for it to work. Yeah, the smite doesn't oh. work unless you hit with your sword. Now it's Rokus's turn. Just shooting him with the bow. Uh, 17 plus 7. To hit. Uh, 20. That hits. And he's got 7 more damage. Good. Your turn's over. It's Vola's turn. She can hit. She can swing. 
She hits. She hits with two attacks. She rolled an eight. Oh, that's all the the all the all bear had left. Eight hit points left. So oh good. She smashes it in the head with her battle axe, and it crumples to the ground. And I'm gonna spend the next five minutes plucking arrows out of this thing. Okay, roll a d20 to see if any are broken. 17. Okay, uh, none of them are broken. <laughs> he looks like a pin cushion. I can go get my um, javelin, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a it's bola. Not, you find it's not broken. Awesome, bola. That was good. Hey, bola. Yeah. Good question. You know how to use a javelin? Um, not really. I mean, I haven't practiced with javelins. Okay, so if I gave you, um, if I gave you two of my javelins, you wouldn't be able to use them. I could use them, but I'm not that good at it. So. Well, I've got five javelins, and I don't see we're going to get in very many situations where I'm going to need all five. So I'm going to give you two of my javelins. All right, I'll take them. that bear been attacking you, you could have ch- tried to chuck one too. Sure. So she takes the two javelins. Can we take? off this uh, owlbear's head for a trophy? Um, it's got a big axe cleave through the we top of it. We don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want that stinky head with us on the, for another day and a half. Okay, never mind. <laughs> if you want some of the claws, you can put those on your neck, please. Yeah. I want some owlbear claws. Alright. Probably, um, I see you feels more, she's not really into skinning animals and stuff, so she, she probably doesn't Appreciate no, that. I'm, no, as a part druid. Of nature. But uh, yeah. Rokus is is a a hunter, so he he respects he nature trophy. in a different way. Yeah. yeah. So this, so maybe Ro- that- maybe uh, I see you goes back to camp and ignores what he's doing. And if I was gonna skin this thing out, but the, there's so many arrow holes in it, it looks like a sieve. Yeah, I don't know what a owlbear... Bear meat's pretty good. What's that? Bear meat's pretty good, so we could have it for breakfast to save a ration. Well, this thing is like a cross between a bird and a bear, so I, I don't know what its meat would taste like. I guess everyone taste... says animals taste like chicken anyway. I was going to say, <laughs> it tastes like chicken. It might be a, a kind of a grizzly chicken, I guess. And yeah. the skin, I'm oh, guess it looks like it, it has it has feather feathery looking. Um, so I guess its its skin is more like a bird's skin. That makes it easy to peel off then. Yeah. I'm not interested in watching you butcher this animal, so I'll go back and start the fire. Yeah, I wonder if um, I see you might be a vegetarian. Never thought about that. I'm an animal lover. They taste great. <laughs> I love animals too, especially barbecued. Yeah, probably <laughs> Harvick's probably the least one who cares the least about animals. Then I'm going back to start the fire. I'll he's see from you back a, camp. Harvick comes from a noble family who lives in the in a mountain. They don't have much. Um, I don't think they have much <clears throat> appreciation for nature. Well, I have appreciation for nature, but I'm a hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying Harbeck. He he probably yeah. thinks he's probably thinks uh, big game hunting sounds like a cool thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, it attacked us. It's coming right for us. Yeah. <laughs> we tried to. Hey, we tried to stay out of its way. So. Uh... I'll tell you what, that thing had a lot of um, stamina. I put a a mess of hits on it before it got to us. Yeah. It's a good thing it was four against one, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, well, so you've dealt with this owlbear, and uh, you took care of him pretty well. And (laughs) you're able to get a meal from the meat. And uh, mm-hmm. Rokus takes a couple, maybe feathers and uh, claws as okay. trophies. And maybe uh, you can draw a picture of his necklace. <laughs> I might have to update his picture eventually. Yeah. 
He'll have all kinds of weird stuff draped all over him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, you guys take a few extra hours to finish the long rest because you're interrupted. So you get a little bit of a late start on day 14. So are we still late morning or are we uh, high noon? Oh, uh, no, it's still morning. Um, okay, so you set out traveling. You go for most of the day. You don't see any um, travelers on the road. You do see like um, footprints and tracks and stuff that people have been coming down the road. Rokus thinks he might see the the uh, shoemaker you guys saw last time's footprints mixed in there. When it gets to be nighttime, there's a hill with a few rocks on top, and then the rest of the land is pretty flat. So we'll camp on the hill. Sounds good. Yep. Okay. At the top of the hill, there are like a few rocks there. The there are like kind of three larger ones that kind of stick out. It's big enough that you can kind of sit with your back to it to be like a kind of a chair. So you're gonna make camp there. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. As you're getting ready to start your night watches, Vola is um, chatting with you guys. Uh, she's asking Rokus, where did you learn to uh, hunt so well? Oh, uh, that was what I did when I uh, worked with my mentor. Uh, I, as scouts, I was the one that would provide provisions for everybody on our trips. Mm. Uh, did you have any um, interesting hunts that you went on? Nothing spectacular. Uh, um, we we kept eyes out for dragons. I saw a couple of villages that had been uh, torn up by dragons, but we never actually saw one. So can you can you track dragons? Oh yeah, yeah. Don't dragons fly? Yeah, but when they come down, uh, I can tell what they've been up to. I heard they have pretty nasty um, magics surrounding them. Yeah, I've heard all sorts of things about them, but I've never actually seen one. I've seen what they've done, though. Yeah. Seen that? Seen the aftermath. <clears throat> I've heard that uh, once they make their lair. They, uh, there's a magic aura that emanates and it affects the area they, they have inhabited, like enchants the whole area. Right. Well, and I, I have resistance to, uh, magic. So, um, if I encounter that, hopefully I'll be able to, uh, deal with it. Hmm. All right. How about you, Dwarf? What what's your um, what what were you up to before you came out to start adventuring? I've been uh, training as a most of my time I've spent training uh, as a uh, paladin, oh. so I have to get all the spells down and stuff like that. So this who, is my you, my first. Who do you pray to? I'm out as a paladin. Who do you pray to? Um, here I think it is. Yeah, tear. <laughs> I think Harvick himself says it more confidently. <laughs> I wasn't sure I could speak his name in public or not. I had to check to make sure about that. Oh, okay. He's a he's a not he's a novice. Yeah. I no, I'm 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 a uh, post novice, but that's very first time out as a non novice. All right, cool. And uh, she asks, I see you. How about you? What's your expertise? Well, I, my, I have good insight, um, and I can be quite charming. Oh. And, uh, and I'm very <laughs> much about nature and animals, and I can actually uh, shift change into animals that I've seen. Wow. Um, and I, and I have uh, the healing word where I can help people if, if you're injured. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah she just chats with you guys and asks you about your past history and stuff and um anything you guys want to talk about with each other? Um yeah, with my uh uh who knows much much about magic cuz I'd like to know if my divine sense would be able to detect this uh aura that the dragon thing that you were talking about. Uh Okay, Rokas, you do a history check to see if you can tell him about that. Uh, ten. I don't think I have any extras for history, so I have an average knowledge. Well, you all, you're you're kind of knowledgeable in in, in the story that, about dragons, so I'll make that a little. The check is a little easier for you. Okay, I'll take it. Um, so he lets you know that dragons are generally evil creatures um so part of your spell detects evil i would i know it's a dragon or not i think you just know that from seeing it uh if you're talking about all you were saying that the lair itself has this emanates um rokas tells you that dragons kind of um they have a magical effect on the areas that they inhabit that they've decided to create their layers so it'll do things like the trees will grow like uh faster and um more dense to protect the dragon and even stuff like the plant life might come alive and attack people who come into the layer that kind of thing okay so Anything, Rokas, you want to ask Harvick about anything, or you just want to get on with the rest? Um, I'm sleepy. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, Rokas is ready to meditate. So let's start our night watch. So Rokas, do your perception check. 18 plus 5. 23. Harvick, you do the next one. 6 minus 1, 5. Okay, <laughs> once again. Oh, he's picking his nose. Uh, I see you. Perception check. 16 plus 3 is 19. Okay, nothing happening. And Vola got a 6. And she doesn't see anything. Rokus doesn't see anything interesting all night. And the night passes by without any interruptions. So now we're starting day 15 of our adventure. Okay, I collected all my stuff I had put up. So that was your second night, so you should only have a couple hours left to get to Fandolin. So you're back to Fandolin. Yay, you survived. Yay. Bola says, all right guys, I'm gonna check back in with uh, Sildar and the rest at the manor, so. Uh, it was nice adventuring with you. Glad we were able to do some help. Uh, once you get um, my share of the reward, sure, come bring it to me. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. We could do that. So she says, all right, I'm going to be up at the manor. We'll see you there later. Okay. All right, so we'll Let's go to off. the stone... How about we go to the Stone Hill Inn and get cleaned up, and then we can go and report your sister, Gariella, and then get our treasure, get our reward, and then take it to Viola at the Tresendar Manor. It's Vola. Vola. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, that sounds good. You can do that. Um, So do you want to go to the Stone Hill Inn first? Yeah. All right, so I see you leading the way. She takes you to Stonehill Inn, and you see Toblin in there. He wel- welcomes you guys back. Said, "Hey, you're back." Who's Toblin? Yeah. He's Toblin's the innkeeper. The innkeeper. So how's yeah. thing? How's things been since we were gone? Oh well, it's we haven't had any uh, trouble with uh, any bandits or. None of the red brands have showed up. I think you got rid of them all. Okay. Um, we we had a couple of travelers come into town. 
There was oh, a, one more liner. There was a guy named Cooper the Cooper the cobbler. Yeah. Said he makes him. shoes. He's a cord wainer. Yeah. He said uh, he met some guy on the road who told him about his uh, <laughs> the name of his profession. <laughs> <laughs> so now he knows what he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but he says he, he, said he was he was offering to he was coming door to door at offering to fix up anybody's uh shoes or anything like that. But I think he's got a little tent he set up kind of um at the north side of town. Oh neat. How about um what was our, our little goblin guy that we left? Droop. Yeah, how's Droop doing? I haven't seen Droop. Okay. Yeah, he hasn't come in here at least. Is um, ne ne um, Linnea around? Uh, I think she's been she's been staying here still, but she's uh, spending most of her time at the Town Esther's Hall, I think. Okay. And, and um, um, Sildor? Sildar's there. He's he's been at yeah. the manor in the Tom Masters Hall trying to make a, make a plans with the Town Master Harbin. How about Glassstaff? What's he been up to? Uh, as far as I know, he's still in the in the jail. Okay. What do you do to get thrown in jail? He was the head of the red brand. We killed all his his men and tossed him in jail. I thought I thought Sildor was going to take him to the oh the Lions Gate or whoever they were. The Lords of Lions. Lords of Lions. Yeah. Um. So Toblin says, yeah, I don't really know about their plans. You have to go ask them about that. They they haven't been in here, um, talking about that kind of stuff. Okay. Where do we go to get a reward for killing the or orcs? Oh, that's the town master. Okay. So do we want to go get our rewards and go and visit um, Sister Gariella? Yeah, let's go to the town masters, and then we'll go see Sister Gariella, and then we can... Uh, who else? Um, um, Elder Mass, the orchard master guy yeah Edermath. Edermath. okay lead the way okay into the town hall all right so you go back to the town master's hall and you find um harbin is in there and linia and sildar are there too hey linia linia says you miss Hello and greets you guys warmly. You missed some good fighting, lady. She says that she's, uh, I don't know, did, does Linnea want to make a cameo? Hello. Do you want to say something? They're, they're, they just came to say hello to you. Hello. Hello, Linnea <laughs> says hello and, um, yeah, she, uh, she chats with you for a bit about your adventure. Um, so, so Harvin says, you take care of those orcs. Sure did. Look at this pile of orc teeth I got. Well, Harvin's very impressed and a bit disgusted. Says, okay, put, <laughs> put, those, away. put those away, okay? Uh, we've, we've got your uh, reward here. So he hands over a hundred gold pieces. So I guess um we'll take twenty five for Yeah, I think this time. in this situation you guys should each take twenty five and then you gonna give Vola twenty five? Yeah. Yeah, so he pays you and says good job. Um so they're they're just talking about kind of um mundane things about town watches and um Sildar is talking about when when he's gonna be able to secure this place so that he can take Yarno back. 
he's not sure yet exactly when he's gonna feel uh, he's safe to do that. How how's the other red brand prisoner doing? Uh, he's sobered up. He doesn't seem very happy about it. Eh. And how about um um, Droop? How's Droop doing? Uh, you asking Sildar that? Yeah. Droop. Um, I think he was working with the farm. Was it the farmer? He was staying. No, he was staying with the farmer. Saying he was working at the wood carver. Woodworking right? shop. I th- yeah. I f- I think I saw him talking to um that. There was a traveling salesman, and there was an old, old woman, and her. Well, I don't know how to describe him. He's a, seems like uh he might be a little slow, but he's a big guy. They're up there in the north part of town. I think okay. Troop was hanging out with them a bit. Okay. So you want guys have want... you heard have you heard how Sildar, have you heard how you're heard any more about your partner that's at the um the castle? Crack Cragmore Castle. Oh, um Gundren? Yeah. Yeah, no no word on Gundren yet. I'm hoping he's still okay. Yarno Yarno had said that he thought he he wouldn't be uh, killed or anything, so hopefully we still have time to uh, rescue him. I, I, it seems like if they were gonna kill him, they probably would have killed him already. Would have already done it. But Yarno said he wasn't dead last time. He was at Cragmaw. Let's let's go um, tell Gariel what we've found. Any anything else you need from us, Sildar? Um. No, how did uh, Vola do on the adventure? She was great. She, she uh, finished off. She had off. many kills. Yep. <laughs> well, she's a strong warrior. Yep, she cool. was good to have. Um, I'm going to probably have her on duties uh, soon. So I'm not sure if she can go out with you next time, but you might talk to Darius. Darius, one of the other... Um, yeah, I introduced you to Vola and Darius. Yeah. Okay. And Darius was just a warrior? He's another soldier, yeah. A human, though, right? He's a human, yeah. He uses a long sword. Harbeck, when we give Vola her her part of the money, you might want to retrieve your javelins. Okay. And we'll, if we take Darius with him, you can give them to him. Okay. Let's go see... Gary Al, then I guess. Okay, cool. Okay, so you walk out of the Townmaster's Hall, and over there it's not very far, and you go into the little shrine, and she's in there. She says, "Oh, you've returned." Yeah. And we uh, we saw the we saw the banshee. Oh, so yeah, we did talked you to discover the? Location of the spell book? He traded the book to a necromancer named Hester North from the city of Ira Abor more than a hundred years ago. She does not know what became of the book afterward. Yeah, that sounds about right. Ser North from the city of Iriabor. Okay, so uh, Sister Gariel seems to be slightly familiar with those names. So she says, hmm, I think that, that that's probably enough to give them a lead. I'll report it to my superiors. Thank you. And she goes to get your reward, which was three potions of healing. One for each of us. Yeah. Okay. So, so we we'll need... head back over to the inn for something to eat and something to drink and you a shower. Still, and... You have one no, outstanding no. Um, we, we're quest to turn Orchard master wanted us to uh, tell him about the what was going on with the at the tower. At okay. the tower. So you walk over there, and um, he's not outside. You go knock on his door, and he's I in was... the, in his home, and he welcomes you to come in. 
he offers you some tea. Would you like some tea? As long yes. as he drinks it first. <laughs> okay. He's, he drinks the tea. You know, this is the guy <laughs> who gave you his, like, treasured sword. <laughs> I'm not taking any chances. This is Darren, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your sword came in handy, Darren. It, it really uh, helped out. Rokus is lying because he didn't use the sword. It was comforting to have. Let's see. I'll do our insight check. Let's see. 19 insight check. So you didn't it use that. It was, com <laughs> was, it was comforting to have. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> we were fighting a lot of orcs. Oh, okay. You fought the orcs. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I told you about the town master. Did you t tell the town master? Yeah, yeah, and he gave us our reward. All right, cool. And we we saw the wizard at the tower. Um, oh, a wizard, you say? Yeah. Yeah. Tell Echo me about this. Up. Tell me about the old, old owl well. Well, the old owl well, um, it's an enchanted castle. Um, and there's a, a, a necromancer there with a bunch of zombies. And um, he he had us. Um, um, he had us deal with some orcs, and um, he he told us that um, he was kind of secretive. Uh, we're not sure what he's up to. He says he's going to be there for a while. We couldn't get a lot of information out of him. He's got just him and his zombies. Hmm. That doesn't sound very good. But yeah, you did. You didn't see him. Did, did you see him doing anything specifically? No, not really. Um, no, and he he would. We didn't go inside his tent. Hmm. No, he he wasn't helpful. He was evil, but he was not trying to fight us. Hmm. You could tell he was. Harbeck well, said it's he kind was, of what I was yeah. worried about that. Um, Someone like that might try to uh, unearth some forgotten magic. I I'll definitely report this to my um, my um, your contacts. Friends. Yeah, my contacts at the gauntlet. Um, okay. They'll probably send someone over there to investigate. But uh, knowing knowing specifically what's there, that'll be very helpful to make sure they they are not taken by surprise there's 12 zombies okay that's yeah that's great any any other things you saw well the strongest magic was from the middle of the castle and he's got a tent outside and there was magic coming from that too mm. he might have dug up something all right well if he's still there he's not he must not have found what he's looking for yet Probably not. Probably um, look, the gauntlet can get together a group with uh, specific um, abilities that would be good against the necromancer. But yeah, I'm retired, so that's not for me to deal with, but I'm, I'm happy to report it. So thank you for that. What do you know about uh, the tower? Okay, so Darren tells you he just knew that it was from an ancient magical empire known as the Netheril. And um, he was worried that dangerous magic might be dormant there. Do you know what kind of magic? I'm getting this from the book. It's not specific of all that. So. Okay. Just ancient dangerous magic that maybe stuff that isn't uh, isn't known anymore. Uh, okay. So yeah, he says. Okay. Well, you've earned that sword. So uh, thanks for helping out. Okay, and, and it is going to be known as Darren's Orc Slayer. All right, I like it. Darren's I think Orc Bane. Yeah, Orc Piercer is what it was called before. Now it's Darren's Orc Bane. All right. <laughs> so uh, he he's just relaxing in his house, drinking his tea. He waves you goodbye. Okay, so you've oh, turned oh, in your and, quests. Yeah. Um, I just wanted, when we 
before we leave to tell him that we found some, uh, some pearls. A pearl. pearl. A pearl. We had a pearl. Okay, you got pearls. Yeah. Is there anything uh, you know? Anybody that's interested in in pearls? Well, I don't know exactly what she's dealing in but there's this weird old lady who came into town she has like a little tent and little um blanket set up at north end of town okay she had like a bunch of weird little knickknacks there she might Did you get her name um start with a z i think I zelda know. I, I I don't remember. She was kind of okay. weird, so. Oh, have you seen uh, Droop at all while we've been gone? I think Droop, Droop was talking to that old lady. Okay. Has he has he been behaving himself? Mm, I haven't seen him or heard of him doing anything bad, so I guess yes. Okay. Very good. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> Alright, so you walk out of his house. Anything else yeah. you want to do? Let's go eat and drink at the end. Let's what? just have a bit of a rest. What do you want to do is go out and drink. Yeah, let's... I know. She, she does I have a like to drink. With it. <laughs> let's I go to the problem. north. Let's go quickly up to the north town. See, see um, Droop and this old lady. Show her I'm the pretty tired. I'm going back to the end. Yeah, I was going to say, I see you, you if you want to, you don't have to go with them. <laughs> I'm going back to the end. I'm going to have something to eat and something to drink. All right. See so you boys later. You guys go off into the middle of town and um, I see you goes in the inn. So we'll show her a little bit of the story. So she goes into the Stonehill Inn and Toblin says, hey, what are you? You're back. What are you? Are you looking for some ale? Yes, I'll have a large one. All right. So I've ale. Been dealing with those feuding boys of mine. Oh, two My of them now, partners. huh? Yeah, they're always arguing. I see. All right. Well, driving me to drink. Ale is for copper, so he gives you. He pours you an ale. In an extra big glass. Um. Okay, let's cut back to Harbeck and Rokus. So okay, we're headed we've, north. Yep, we're headed north. We're going up by the smithies looking for Droop and this lady. So you get, um, when you get up north as the, the road is leaving town, you see two tents kind of set up. One of them is, um, very colorful with lots of like little decorations on it and the other one is uh more simple it's got some wood it's kind of set up like a it's got kind of a wooden um stall in front with a cloth uh tent thing kind of behind it they're both there so you can approach either one which one's closest which one did we come They're to kind first? Of on either side of the road. On the west side of the road, you come to the the plainer looking one first. Okay. Okay. As you get close, you can see some shoes um, up on the top of the wooden um, counter at the front. Okay. And you look into the tent and you see um, Droop and the guy cooper the cobbler hey drew oh it's you oh. how are how have you been oh i'm fine good i've been um talking to cooper here he's he was showing me how to fix shoes oh that's great Shoes are Cooper, very pretty. We... Yeah. So we were gone how many days? Three or four days? Actually, mm. more like five. Yeah, we, this about is day five, fifteen. We went. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to see you're here. It's then we talked to the Cooper. Is 
Has Droop actually been working for you? Cooper looks up and says, Oh, no, I I just uh, was showing Droop a couple things. He was asking about the shoes. So I was showing him how to do some basic repairs. Great. Can you enhance shoes? Can you make them work better? Uh, I don't. If you're talking about magic or anything, I I don't know how to do anything like that. But just simple uh, repair, and I can make some pretty basic shoes. I do know how to make like one model of a, a finer kind of shoe. And, but and I, I'm those... I'm mostly end up fixing shoes. Okay. Are are our shoes in good shape? Your shoes are are of are average. You don't need to really worry about their upkeep. Um, okay. But uh, maybe if there was some situation like you were gonna go meet with some nobles or something, you might have to you know something storytelling wise, you might wanna get something fancier. Okay. Does droop does droop need shoes? I'm actually not sure if goblins wear shoes. I don't think they. Would, I feel like they friends. don't. Would like, he want hobbits shoes? don't wear shoes, right? You know. <laughs> nah. he's a no, I was just saying, like, not, yeah, in the official art for the goblins, they don't wear shoes. I think they have like well, um, now, beast-like feet. Now, they don't actually now, need to wear shoes. Okay. I was just gonna. If he wanted to become a, a town townsman, he might want shoes. Uh, so you talk to Droop about the idea of him getting shoes. He says, "Oh, maybe I can learn to make my own shoes." Okay. Cool. You can see, okay. like, he doesn't really need shoes, but he th seems to think shoes are pretty, so he might want to try to make some. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on uh, on getting along in the town. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, Everyone's and, been pretty nice. And I want to give you some copper pieces as a reward for uh, and and payment just for being helpful. Oh. Okay. So you so you'll have some spending money. Thank you. How about five copper a day for the days you've been here? Oh, okay. That's very generous. Okay, so here's your 25 coppers. All right. Uh, you can see the, the shoemaker is, um, like, kind of, uh, he's impressed by your generosity. And um, he says, yeah, well, you know, I guess people don't give goblins a a fair shake right because they're they're always known for all their troublemaking maybe i can um take droop along with me if he wants troop says ah i maybe I'll, i have to think about it and uh so they just go back to um him showing him how to do repairs okay and they uh and let Say goodbye if you guys are leaving. Okay, yeah, and we'll go over to the fancier tent. Okay, so you get over to this other tent. It's um very colorful and has lots of strange decorations outside. And there's a blanket oh. laid out in front of it with a bunch of little trinkets on it. When you approach, uh, once you get in front of it, you can see inside. And there's like a really, really tiny old woman. And she's got a purple, like purple, um, riding hood up over her head, so you can't really see her eyes. Okay. And um, sitting behind her is a really big man, just like sitting right on his butt with his legs out, kind of like a baby. And uh, he's drooling on his shirt. He's, he looks like if he stood up, he might be seven feet tall. Wow. Good morning. Uh... Good morning. 
And and what might your name be? Fair lady. Oh. My name is Zara. Zara. So you have wares to sell? Oh, yes, I do. And do you do you have interest in trinkets as well? Oh, yes, trinkets I love to see. We have we have several items we've picked up on our travels. Oh. I'll show you. I have a a jade frog. Oh, that's very pretty. And, and I have a uh, eye patch that we got from a orc on our travels. Mm. We have some gems. Oh. And two pearl. Oh, pearls. I like pearls. I like to see pearls. Show me the pearls. Okay, here they are. Hmm. Huh. She takes out a um jeweler's a loop. um loop. thing, loop. which I don't know what it's called. It's a loop. Loop. loop? Yep. L O O P. Yeah. Huh. That's a weird name. Okay, she takes out, out a, a loop. And uh, she, it's a very weird looking one that seems um, a needed, very um, unnecessarily complicated looking one. Sometimes they have different lenses. Yeah, this one has you... like 15 different lenses. Yeah, and you f can arrange them. They magnify and if you stack them, then they, they um, multiply the oh. magnification. Some will also polarize. Okay, so yeah. she's she's using a very strange looking one, and she's looking very carefully at the pearls. She says, "Hmm, I will give you uh, eighty-one gold for this one, and ninety-three for this one." What do you uh, think, Harbeck? Well, oh, okay. Um, can you uh, roll for charisma stuff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's multiple, okay. there's a few ways that you could uh, like um, approach this if you want to uh, determine what's going on. So you could either try to convince her of, of something. You could see what if she's lying about something. You could um, check the pearl yourself. You could. There's a lot of things, so it depends on kind of role playing wise what you want to try to do. You might want to just look at what your character's good at first. That's, that's what I was asking. My my character's good at charisma. Okay, so look at your if you look at your skills in the center. Yeah. So insight is a wisdom skill which you're not good at. So you can't you're not good at telling if people are lying or something. But if you go uh, down go down to huh? charisma um at down at the bottom, you have persuasion. Yeah, that's you one. You see I... that? So it's, you got a plus five because you're proficient and you're good. Your charisma's good, so you got a plus five. So I, I have... you might try to convince her. And I have... I try uh... to convince her to give us more money is what I was going to try to do. Right, well, why don't you... Rokas, how about you... you? I have perception plus... Well, you um... have... In... Don't you have insight? Yes, plus five. Okay, so like... Um, Harvick can try to convince her to pay more and you can also see like by her body language if she's giving you a truthful um, estimate okay so you want to do both of those yeah I think Mine it makes didn't. sense for Rokas to go first so she yeah. just looked at she's just looking at that and yeah I don't <laughs> I don't I only have like seven so I don't know seven? much about it yeah. Yeah, because her um her riding hood is over her face a lot of it, so you can't you couldn't get a good look at her while she was talking. So yeah. you're not sure what if she's telling the truth or not. Uh Harvick, if you want to try to talk her into it, you can say a few sentences and then if I'm doing can... a 20. Well, okay. Yeah. Listen to this. So if you you should if you don't want to actually say anything you it's okay if you just roll but if you 
convince if you do a convincing job to me as the dm if you're good enough i might not make you roll for it okay so you can try to role play it out okay well these pearls look really good so uh i i think a hundred for uh, each one of them would be a, a reasonable uh price hmm, 100 hmm, 100 Look how pretty they are, and, and it, we did a lot of work trying to get them. It's not like, you know, they just roll down the hill on you. Uh, 95. I'll give you 95. For each? Yeah, 95 for each. Um, 95 for each, uh, and you also tell us what you know about pearls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the deal? Sure. Okay. Rolled a... Ooh. I rolled a natural 20. Oh, for for, for persuasion? Yeah. Uh, okay, so because you're so... Hey, well, and you had plus 5, so that's 25. Okay, so so that was a little bit a little bit strange the way we did that because we kind of came to agreement on 95. Kind of already. came out from the back end. Yeah, but your roll is so good. Um, Let's continue a little bit. So as... She, she says she um st starts to take out the money and uh she um takes out she pours it out into her hand and it just happens to come out at 200 like the coins just fell into her hand and she uh. says oh seems the seems the fates want me to give you 100 each so here you are. I'll forget the information. There's not much I can probably tell you about pearls anyway. But these are good ones. Yes, yes, they're they're of good quality. Okay, okay. so she she buys your pearls. She uh passes the bag of gold back to her um companion behind her and he puts them on his lap. He puts the pearls on his lap. He puts the gold bag, the remaining gold in her bag that she paid okay. you from. Okay. The pearls she you didn't you you didn't notice what she did with them, but you don't see them anymore. Okay. Um, so what what sort of trinkets and things do you have? All right, on on the blanket in front of you, Zara. Yeah, Zara. Uh, you see lots of things like um, a tiny silver icon of a raven, a blank book whose pages refuse to hold ink, chalk, graphite, or any other substance or marking. She uh, demonstrates for you. She writes on it and nothing will be written on the book. A book that cannot be written on. Hmm. Is that a spell book by any chance? Oh, uh, no. Okay. It's just a curious little book. Okay. I once used it to uh, trick someone. I told them that if they could sign their name for this contract that we'd have a deal, but... It was in this book, and they couldn't. Okay. How much is the book? She says it's only uh, silver. One silver? Yeah, one silver. Might as well take it. It's pretty yeah. interesting. For silver, that looks like it's a deal. All right. She gives okay. you... She sells you the book for a silver. Any, what else does she have? She has a hilt from a broken sword. She has a rabbit's foot. She has a glass eye. She has an old key. She has a crystal doorknob. She has a set of bone pipes. She has a petrified mouse. <laughs> and she has a metal urn that she says contains the ashes of a hero. Ashes of what? Of a hero. The people that would be able to uh, resurrect... Ashes of a hero. 
a really I strong wizard. Yeah, I don't think any of the resurrection spells are strong enough to work on ashes. Any of the typical ones you can get at least. Anyway, um, those are what she's got in front of her. I'll trade you an eye patch from an orc for your rabbit's foot. Okay. Do you remember the details of that eye patch? Well, I got it off of a, one of the orcs in our battle. It had jewels on it. You want to trade this eye patch for the rabbit's foot? She's, is that right? Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, well, what do you give me for the eye patch? In 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 a deal with for the for the rabbit's foot. Um, she takes the eye patch and takes out her loop and looks at it again. Mm hmm. I'll give you the rabbit's foot. And 20 gold. Okay. She nudges her um, friend and he gives her the bag of gold. And she pours out 20 gold and she hands you the rabbit's foot. Okay. And the once again, you don't see exactly what happens with the jeweled eye patch when you give it to her. Okay. Anything else, Harbeck? Uh, not that I can see offhand. Okay. Um, so are you going to head back to the inn? Yeah, I, I guess wanna, so. On the way back to the inn, I yeah. want to stop by Barthur's um, provisions. Barthur's provisions? Yeah. Okay. What did you want to do there? I wanted to get three, three um, balls of string. Is that all? No. Okay, well, so, I, I, I'm trying to end the session soon, so I was okay. try, I'm trying to determine oh, like how much more time this would take. Um, yeah. we, could, we, we could we could we can quit we can quit now and uh, go into Balthrin's uh, next time. Yeah, is that good w with you guys? Sure. All right, yeah. so we'll just stop it there where you um, finished with the the curio seller. Okay. Okay, let's call it quit for today and. Uh, Hope you guys had fun. You killed the owl bear. That was interesting. I I was super lucky with my rolls, and actually on the last uh, hit, I rolled the d8, and I forgot to add three to it. So I actually would have hit him with uh, ten instead of seven oh. for the last hit. So I, I, my rolls for that were amazing. Yeah. Well, sometimes the luck is with you, and sometimes it's not. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ian. This was fun. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So next time, um, you guys can pick up some new quests and figure out what you want to do next.